Hello! Today we're going to talk about Artemis by Andy Weir. Artemis by Andy Weir is the latest offering from the author of the highly acclaimed book, The Martian. You may have read this or watched them as they saved Matt Damon. <laughs> So this is a different premise, but it is also set in outer space. Jazz Bashara is our protagonist of this book. She's a smuggler. She lives in a city on the moon called Artemis. Jazz points out that to get to the moon and live on the moon is highly, highly expensive, but every city needs its working class. And she is one of them. So this book has a lot of publicity about it, so I'm not going to spend too long talking about the um, plot. What I am going to do is tell you what I like and don't like about it. Here's what I like about Artemis, what I don't like, and I will try to stop swinging this book around like a prop because I'm not good at holding props. <laughs> okay, number one, what I liked about it especially was the diversity. Not just diversity for diversity's sake, but I really liked that there was a whole gamut of people in this book. Um, so Jazz Bashara is female, she's non-white, there are a lot of people from different countries, different ethnicities, different religions, all of them are respected, all of them are treated as equals. I mean, even the administrator of the of Artemis, which is kind of like the president of the city on the moon, is a 70-year-old Kenyan woman. It's kind of fun in science fiction to get to see women being really smart, really technical, um, saving the day. It just, I like that we get to be part of the fun too. <laughs> not that men don't deserve part of the fun as well. Don't worry, I'm not gonna get into that discussion this time. The next thing I liked about it was the fun. Um, Andy Weir has a lot of fun with his dialogue. He has a lot of fun with his characters. Um, this is evident in The Martian as well. Mark Watney is not some straight-laced, buttoned-down astronaut. He is very much someone with personality and humor and likability. And so I don't know that I would necessarily call Jazz in, the, um, in Artemis likable, but she has loads of personality. A lot of the things that happen are fun. I think at one point Jazz even is like, "Wee!" as <laughs> she's zooming through the stuff that she's doing. There's a lot of personality there. It's not all morose as science fiction could be. Um, it's kind of like Andy Weir has brought levity back to science fiction. Not that it was ever sorely missing, but it's definitely um, a trademark of his that he injects into his writing. So those are the things I like about it. Now I'm going to get into the two things that I like not so much about Artemis. I keep trying not to call it the Martian. So the first con of the book is the dialogue. Oh boy, the dialogue. It's Some of it is just so teeth gratingly cheesy. Um, let me read you a sample passage. Um, she waved her hand as if shooting a bug. Every city needs an underbelly. It's best to let the petty criminals do their thing and focus on bigger issues. I grinned. You heard the lady, and I'm the pettiest of all. So let me go. <laughs> That's typical dialogue. <laughs> it, it's, oh boy, it's something. So part of what makes the book so fun also makes it a little bit much little bit much, a little bit much. Um, yeah, so I'm going to introduce um, something that I call the Tom Cruise persona. So when you're watching movies, sometimes you'll see an actor who seems to play the same role over and over and over. They don't necessarily all have to be the Tom Cruise character, but he's the person that I think of most prominently that does this. It's kind of like, um, they, they create this one um, stock character that's an amalgam of all his greatest, best traits and then amp up the charisma, the personality, the heroicism to make him the most idealized version that he sees of himself. This sounds really down on Tom Cruise. Um, I still like to watch his movies, so take that however you want to take it. 
But this would be kind of a sample dialogue that I would have with someone. Hey, I'm going to go watch Jerry Maguire or Night and Day or Jack Reacher or Mission Impossible. Oh yeah, who's it? Who's the character? Tom Cruise. That's the character. That's the character he plays in all of those movies is Tom Cruise. He always has that maniacal laugh and the glint in his eye. The reason I bring up the Tom Cruise persona is because I'm finding that that's kind of what Andy Weir does with his characters. They're not Tom Cruise, but he kind of creates this core character who has all of the best traits that I am personally kind of imagining Andy Weir might be because it, I it, I just get a feeling that he's injecting so much personality of his own into these characters. I could be wrong. I don't know the guy. He seems like he would be awfully fun to hang out with. But when you think about it, the characters of Jazz Bashara, Mark Watney, Svoboda, um, you know, a lot of these central characters could really be interchangeable. They could easily say each other's dialogue without you really noticing that who, whose mouth it's coming from. It could come from any of their mouths and sound completely organic to whoever that character is supposed to be, and that character is the Tom Cruise persona. Another con is the relationships. They seem overly chummy really, really fast. So Svoboda is one in particular that he's kind of this... Um, Oh, not very, not very animated person. Then, and then all of a sudden, when this big to do is happening, Svoboda all of a sudden becomes this crazy animated character who is just completely familiar with everyone right off the bat. For example, when he's meeting Jazz's father for this first time, it's like, "Hello, nice to meet. Hey, bro, how's it going? My name is Svobo. High five. That's not the exact." dialogue, but it could be. And you kind of see the same thing with Jazz and her dealings with all the people in the book. So for example, in one scene, she's meeting the administrator for the first time and she's tongue tied and kind of starstruck. And then the next time she meets her, the woman's calling her dear and she's like giving this person kind of a hard time because that's how Jazz interacts with everyone is with this slightly antagonistic, um, cocky attitude. So just the over-familiarity that people have with each other is a little bit, nah, I don't, not, not quite as believable. Everyone seems to be best friends right off the bat. So I'm going to bring in another movie analogy here. So don't worry, it's not going to be Tom Cruise again. <laughs> but it's the movie The Holiday, the Nancy Myers movie. And again, this is a movie that I've watched probably like four or five times because I actually enjoy it. But... The thing that gets me in that movie is the instant familiarity people have with each other. So, for example, in one scene, the old man is walking down the street dazed and confused and Kate Winslet stops and is like, Hi, I'll give you a ride home. And so she does and then all of a sudden they're taking daily walks together and she has convinced him to be inducted into this Hollywood um, award ceremony which she gets to walk him down the aisle for. All of this happens within just the two weeks that she's there. And oh yeah, she falls in love. It's just... Um, Ugh. Now, one of the major gripes I had about The Martian was that while it's so heavy on the technical aspect and Andy Weir makes the technical part of it really enjoyable and somehow actually understandable, it was completely lacking in any sort of character development. So really Mark Watney ends The Martian the same way he began it. He's still this isolated person and there really should have been a story there. I mean, he doesn't have anyone else waiting for him back on Earth except for his parents and even that connection doesn't seem as strong as it could be. And so there could have been a lot of reflection, development that he could have done that it just didn't happen. So really fun technical knowledge, no character development. The Artemis takes a little bit of a step forward in it. Jazz, um, she's still the same person, but when we contrast who she is as an adult compared to who she was as a child, there is some development there. So while I wouldn't necessarily say that she's completely redeemed or even necessarily likable, <laughs> she has made some progress from the beginning of the book to the end. So 
that that's definitely a step forward for, for this book compared to The Martian. So what I'm curious about is if Andy Weir did not have his armor of intense technical knowledge about space and this Tom Cruise persona that he's created, what would, um, what would the book look like? What, what would he write from there? And so I'm curious. I don't know that he has to do that. I mean, he's found a niche that works really, really well for him. He, he is probably laughing all the way to the bank and not really paying any of these reviews any heed, which kudos to him. You go for it. Do not give my cons to this book a second thought. But I'm kind of curious to know if he were to take off that armor, what would be left underneath as, as an author for him? Kind of curious whether he decides to go in a different direction and try something without space and his Tom Cruise persona, or whether he decides to stick with outer space for the entirety of his career. I'll still be there. I'll be there to read whatever he puts out. I may not like everything. I'll probably still have pros and cons. Maybe three to five books in, I'll be screaming about this persona he's created and how it's got to go, it's got to be booted the cold equation style from the spaceship. But for now, I am happy to just keep reading whatever he has, whether the exploration is in space or elsewhere. So Artemis by Andy Weir. I give it three stars. It's not perfect. It's not horrible. It's worth it. It's fun. It's a good read. It's a good time. Let me know what you think. The reviews on this book were kind of mixed. So I'm kind of curious to see what other people have to say about it. Uh, let me know in the comments and be sure while you're here to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all of that booktube love. <laughs> I appreciate you watching and I will catch you the next time. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.